Hi everyone, welcome to a quick optimization guide for Abyssus the Six Circle Savage. This video assumes you are familiar with all P6S mechanics and acts as an addendum to my Savage Raid Guide. My name is Ms. Tech and I'll be your strategy guide. For the first exchange of agonies, all players can maintain uptime regardless of which role group gets the donut or AoE attacks. To accomplish this, only one mobile player in each role group will be assigned to take their AoE attack in the far corner. All other players will be positioned around the boss in this manner. The positioning is pretty tight here as players will also have to dodge the chorus Ixu cast at the same time, so this may take some practice to get just right. Use the patterns and the lines on the floor to ensure you're standing in the correct spot or you might end up overlapping others. Also, make sure not to over exaggerate your movement when dodging chorus Ixu. All you have to do is stand right next to that diagonal on the safe side. For the second exchange of agonies, the positioning follows the same concept but is much more lenient. The two stacks will be taken at the northwest and southeast sides of the boss, while the circle AoE attack are taken at max melee range in the northeast and southwest. Don't forget to dodge both hits of the exo cleavers. For transmission, players afflicted with snake parasites draw the short end of the uptime stick as most strats call for them to take the extra time to turn their characters around to avoid hitting the raid. With this strat, all players can continue to face the boss throughout the resolution of the mechanic. As transmission is casting, all players are able to identify which parasite they will soon be afflicted by, by following their green tethers to either the snake or wing appendage on the boss. Snake players will then line up inside the boss's hitbox, while wing players line up further away right behind them. This initial lineup in the southwest allows all players to see where everyone is planning on standing in the safe spot for the actual resolution solution of the mechanic. This pre-planning helps us to avoid confusion and overlap. Once the boss starts casting Chorus Ixu and the first safe spot is identified, both player lines will adjust to the left or right into the safe area, maintaining the lineup to ensure nobody is overlapped. All players can continue to face and DPS the boss until they are stunned to resolve their afflictions. The snake players in the front will vomit out their cones in front of them, while the wing players poop out their cones behind them. These two lineups ensure nobody needs to turn away and nobody is ever hit by anyone else's attack. Don't forget to adjust the to the appropriate chorus Ixu safe zones closest to you as soon as you regain control over your character. For the first Cachexia, this strat is widely used in party finder groups and minimizes required movement. As soon as the cast goes off and all players receive their specific debuff timers, players will position themselves around the boss based on their color and timer. All purple players will stand on the west wing side, while all green players stand on the east side. From north to south on each side, position players with the 20 second timers, then 8, 12, and 16 seconds. To avoid overlap, each player will be within their own tile, in the center of the edge of their tile closest to the boss. The 20 second players on each side will step into the hitbox before the dual predation cast goes off to bait the first hit. As soon as they do, they'll move back to their assigned position while the two 8 second players step in. With each hit, each player pair will then step in and out, baiting the dual predation casts in a controlled manner. Once all four hits are baited, all players will run to the opposite side for the final Terra Ixu attack. Hopefully these strats let you pump out a bit more damage. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.